Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. Earlier this year, I built a desktop PC using a Ryzen 3 processor and a B450 motherboard. And during that build, I started to think back to the first PC I ever built in 1996. And so what I've done is to find all the components I used to build that 1996 PC, and I've put them back together, got them working, so we can compare the first PC I ever built with the most recent. So here we have on the right my latest PC build from early 2019, and on the left a very old friend that I first put together in 1996. As you can see, our more youthful PC has a lot more LED lighting, although its 1996 predecessor does have this little display that says hi. And if you're wondering about this, like all desktops of its period, this PC is equipped with a turbo button to slow down the processor when required. So if I press the turbo button, you'll see high turns to low, and back to high again, and back to low again, and back to high again. You could play with that for hours. Comparing specifications, the Ryzen PC has a quad-core 2200G processor running at 3.5 GHz and is equipped with 8 GB of RAM. In contrast, my 1996 build has a Pentium P120 processor running at 120 MHz, with its memory being 32 MB. Turning to storage, just looking at these two PCs, it's very obvious how things have changed over the past two decades. Like an increasing number of modern desktops, the Ryzen PC has no front drive bays at all, and internally stores all of its data on an SSD. For removable storage, it's unequipped with two front USB ports. In contrast, every drive on the 1996 P120 is removable. With at the top here, we've got a caddy which contains the hard drive, and it wasn't common at the time to have hard drive caddies on desktop PCs, but I got this, uh, I think, bundled with the case, and it came in handy on occasion. And then lower down, we've got a floppy disk drive, a 1.44 megabyte, three and a half inch floppy disk drive. These were on PCs for years and years and years. They were the, the means of removable storage for a very long time. And then in the middle, we've got a CD drive. And this is not the original CD drive I fitted into this PC in 1996. I think this actually was added in, in 1998. This is a CD writer, one of the first CD writers you could buy. And I remember it being very expensive, I remember it coming in a very, very large box. Those were the days of a mega-sized packaging. And I remember being incredibly impressed that you could write 600 megabytes of data to a disk that was either writable or even to a rewritable disk in this uh, incredible drive. And I think it still, it still works. It does. It's amazing when old technology still does its stuff, isn't it? That's, that's what storage used to look like on the front of our computers. And so there we are, the old and the new. And I find it really great to have these two PCs running side by side. This said, like you, I'm sure, what I really want to do is to look inside to compare their internals. So let's go and open up both of these computers. So here we have our Ryzen PC from 2019. So we just remove its uh, side panel. And uh, there we are. If we just put that over there. And uh, we can see inside here that one of the things that strikes you when you open up any modern computer is the cooling. We have here the RAID cooler on the processor, a large heatsink and fan. We have a lot of cooling on the graphics card, heatsink, two heat pipes, two fans there as well. We've also got a couple of front case fans and a rear case fan, and there's also a fan in the power supply. There's a lot of cooling in the modern desktop PC. Now, as you may recall from when we put this computer together, the memory here comes in the form of two DDR4 DIMM modules, which run at 2400 megahertz. The machine's internal storage is then this SATA SSD, a 2.5 inch SSD, although there's also an M.2 drive slot, which is not being used here. On the back of the machine, we also find a bevy of USB ports, audio jacks, an ethernet network connector, and ports for connecting a monitor by either DVI, VGA, or HDMI using the onboard graphics, 
or via a DVI, HDMI or DisplayPort if using the fitted graphics card. So there we are. That's a very quick summary of the distinguishing features of our 2019 Ryzen PC. So let's now open up the uh, P120, which has a rather interesting case design compared at least to, to modern PCs. And uh, as you can see, the whole thing comes off in uh, one piece. So uh, if we get rid of that and we uh, take the PC, oh, we've got a rather nice uh, movable motherboard tray here with a sort of handle thing. I won't pull it because not a good idea, but that's, that's a nice feature. But let's get this uh, turned around the other way so we can take a better look. And uh, here we are. And you might remember a few minutes ago, I pointed out the cooling in a modern PC. And it's, it's so different in this uh, 1996 box, isn't it? We have no case fans at all. Uh, we do have a fan in the power supply, which is uh, under there. And we do have a fan on the processor, which is down here, the P120 processor. But as you can see, this is a very small heatsink and fan on, on the processor. And in fact, the CPUs we've been used to before this, the Intel 80386 and 8048X chips, often didn't have a heatsink or a fan at all. So in fact, it was quite a revolutionary to have a heatsink and a fan even of this size on the, the P120. How things have changed, haven't they? And we talk about some of the other things here. We've got uh, ISA slots on the motherboard for taking expansion cards, a couple of PCI slots, one of which has got a graphics card in. And then there's a lot of cables coming off the motherboard, a lot of very wide ribbon cables. Some of these are IDE cables, which go to uh, the drives, which are up the top. Look at those in a second. There's also a cable going into the floppy drive. It got a real mess inside PCs years ago. SATA cables made such a difference, didn't they? But there's also a lot of cables here, a lot of ribbon cables, because things like the serial ports and the parallel port for this PC are actually taken back to the, the back panel via connectors directly to the motherboard. They aren't actually part of the motherboard itself. So that makes things, again, a bit messier inside the case. If you're wondering where the memory is, where the RAM is, that's a good thought. And in fact, it's hiding under here. I don't know if you can just about see under here. This is the four SIMs, single inline memory modules, giving us our 32 megabytes of RAM. We turn to the top of the machine, which admittedly is now on the side, but you see what I mean. We can see inside the top of the caddy, the, uh, the hard drive under here is the uh, optical drive, the CD. Now, I have to admit the hard drive here is not the original. The original hard drive is this one, which was a 1.2 gigabyte drive. But sadly, this drive doesn't work anymore. So for this video, I've replaced that drive with this one. I think it's a 60 gigabyte drive, as far as I can remember. I won't format it to that capacity on this machine, certainly, but it will allow us to boot the thing up and have a look at uh, DOS and Windows in a minute. And also across here, we can see the power supply. Finally, if we take a look at the back of the PC, once again, we see something very different to a modern PC. For start, on the power supply, we've not just got power in, but also power out. That could loop power out into a monitor. I always used to like that. And then, as I said just a second ago, we've got here ports. We've got uh, clearly the VGA port, which is on the graphics card. That's it. We've also got the keyboard port, which goes through to the motherboard, the only port on the motherboard itself. And then we've also got uh, a parallel port, serial port where we're plugging a mouse and other serial port up here. And these are through from cables on the motherboard onto the back. And as you can see, there were clearly something in there, there were some blanking plates in, those have long gone. This case has had all sorts of uses over the years. So there we are. That was my P120, my first ever PC build. And so I think it's now high time to get this thing running. Our 2019 Ryzen 3 PC runs Windows 10, although I've also had it running Linux Mint. Whereas the P120 from 1996, which I've got a connected up here to its original monitor and keyboard, ran DOS and Windows 3.1. And just in case you're wondering, this actually is a flat screen display. This is, I think, a 10.4 inch 640 by 480 flat screen display. If you take a look at the side angle, you can see it's not a CRT, it is a flat screen display. I think actually it's the most expensive computing device 
I've ever purchased still to this day. I got it because I needed a nice small monitor and it's also a small keyboard, as you can see. So these were the original peripherals I used with this PC. Anyway, as I was just saying, it ran DOS and Windows 3.1. So let's boot it up. And there we are, it sounds like it's uh, taking off. Lots of great noises. Computer was much more mechanically satisfying back in the day, wasn't it? Oh, and there it is testing its memory. 32 megabytes of RAM all tested there. Haven't things changed with computing? But uh, this just take me back. This is, oh, it's starting MS-DOS. That's great to see after, after all these years. And uh, now trying to find its CD-ROM driver. You had to have a special CD-ROM driver installed in DOS to actually access one back in the day. And uh, there we are in DOS. And uh, if I uh, type a DIR for directory, we can see a list of what is on this machine. Not, not a lot. There we are in DOS. But in addition to DOS, we've got this amazing newfangled thing as well. We've got Windows 3.1. So if I type Win, we can go into Windows. And here we are in Windows 3.1. My mouse is live. That's good to see, isn't it? This is a clean install of Windows 3.1, so there's not a lot here, but we've got the, uh, the file manager. Well, I remember that, the file manager in Windows uh, 3.1. Oh, this was, this is when computing was exciting and on the frontiers, wasn't it? And we've got, uh, what, accessories down here? What do we have there? Oh, paintbrush. There we are, we could uh, draw in that. It wasn't even called paint, it was called paintbrush then. I think we'll come out of that. Uh, there we are. Do we want to keep it? No, I think we'll lose that. To, the human race, never see that picture again, that's a shame. We've got right there for uh, doing a little bit of uh, that type of stuff. Notepad's still there, of course. Notepad hasn't really changed much. We've still got Notepad. We can still type hello, what do you accept on less clunky keyboards these days, but uh, there we are. And do we want to save that? No, we won't save that either. And um, what else have we got? We must have something exciting to look at. Um, oh, we've got games, of course. There we are, Solitaire was there. We all used to play Solitaire all the time in, uh, I've got to say in Windows 3.1 and most versions of Windows since, since Microsoft took it away. But uh, is this going to work? Don't know. I can't see anything that's going to work well here. Never mind. But um, you could spend hours on this. Oh, there we are. We can put that there. We can put that there. I'll just see if I can make this work. No, I don't think this is possible. But at least I've become reacquainted with a Windows 3.1. On a modern desktop PC like my 2019 Ryzen build, if you want to find out a piece of information, you'll launch a browser and go to a website like Wikipedia. But back in 1996, that wasn't the case. You were far less likely to be online and far more likely to use something like this, which was Microsoft Encarta, a CD-ROM based encyclopedia, which was very popular in the mid 1990s because Bill Gates and other people at Microsoft had decided all the information in the world we needed to know and put it together on one CD-ROM, just over 600 megabytes of data. So let's take a look at Encarta. Here we are back on the Windows 3.1 desktop. It's sitting there in Microsoft Multimedia. I've just installed it. And I should point out, it won't look terribly good when we run it, because here we're running Windows in a 640 by 480 display in 16 color mode, whereas in Carter would like to have 256 color mode. And I've tried very hard to get this computer running in a 256 color mode in Windows, but I can't. And in fact, if we look in Windows Setup, just to divert ourselves a second, we look at Change System Settings. You can see these are all the options we have available to uh, use for displays all sorts of things. We used to have to battle these all the time back in the mid-1990s to get the right display for our uh, system. And uh, there we've got VGA, which is what we're running, which does work. Clearly, we can see it now. There are various 256 color modes here, but they don't work with the display card, the graphics card I've got in the PC right now. I clearly need other display requires disk from OEM. I haven't got one, so I can't do that. So I apologize for the fact you're seeing Carter in a less than optimal state. But anyway, let's run it up. This was effectively the equivalent of going to the web back in the mid-1990s. Here's in Carter. And, uh, oh, here it is showing us some astro astronomy look. Uh, you can see it's uh, categorized into sections. We could look at uh, history or whatever it was, and it would uh, show us lots of stuff. Um, 
Fantastic, we can find about people in ancient Egypt. All sorts of information was here. This was great for people doing their homework, I think, in the, the mid-1990s. And there were various features here. We could go to a timeline of uh, human history down the bottom there, and you could scroll the timeline, I think. There we are. And um, first Olympic Games, we could find it all about it in, in more text there. And uh, I think there was also in this, uh, we could get to Media Gallery and... Uh, can we get to uh, media and video? Yeah, there we are. Oh, I remember the cheetah video. Probably used to look better than this. There we are, the cheetah video in uh, 16 colours. But this was uh, this is what we used to look at back in the day. In fact, even at, at colour depth, you can still see what it is, can't you, if you squint your eyes very slightly. Anyway, I don't think we'll look at any more of Encarta, given that I can't run it in, in better colour mode. But it is, I think, interesting to look back and see how we used to find information on a desktop PC. I'm sure some of you watching this video right now have taken a stack of floppy disks like these and used them to install Windows on a desktop PC. And of course, that's the process I had to go through to set up my P120 to show you in this video. And I found it quite cathartic, and I found it a lot less frustrating than I thought it was going to be. And indeed, for a few minutes, it felt like I was back on the early PC building frontier. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.